Okay, so the 2024 Academy Awards has been a memorable one for some wins that have been a long due. Big Christopher Nolan winning the Best Director to Killian Murphy finally getting the mainstream recognition he deserved. But one particular win overshadowed most of them at least for me was Robert Downey Jr. winning the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor Male for his role as Rear Admiral Louis Strauss in the film Oppenheimer. Three decades after his first Academy Award nomination, Robert Downey Jr. earned his first Oscar a role that was held as one of his most remarkable performances these last years. Although considered one of Hollywood's most adaptable actors, Downey had not won an Oscar before this triumph. He previously received nominations for Best Actor in 1993 for Chaplin and Best Supporting Actor in 2008 for Tropic Thunder. According to Wikipedia, Robert John Downey Jr. was born on April 4, 1965 in Manhattan, New York, the youngest of two children. His father, Robert Downey Sr., was a filmmaker, while his mother, Elsie Ann, was an actress who appeared in Downey Sr.'s films. Downey's father was part Lithuanian Jewish, part Hungarian Jewish and half Irish, while Downey's mother had Scottish, German and Swiss ancestry. Downey moved frequently largely because of his father's film projects and lived in places such as Woodstock, New York, London, New Mexico, California, Connecticut, and Greenwich Village. Depending on the success of the films, the family experienced both phases of poverty and wealth. As a child, Downey was surrounded by drugs, his father was a drug addict, and his mother was an alcoholic. His father allowed him to use drugs from a young age, though his father later said he regretted it. Downey said that he and his father first used drugs together when he was 8 years old and that drug use developed an emotional bond between him and his father. Downey accepted the award with a touch of humor, joking that he is grateful for his terrible childhood, which drew laughter from the audience, before expressing his gratitude to the Academy. But the ones who were aware of his troubled past knew it came from a dark place. During his childhood, Downey played small roles in his father's films. He made his acting debut at age 5, playing a sick puppy in the absurdist comedy Pound, then appearing at age 7 in the surrealist western film Greaser's Palace. He attended Stage Door Manor, a summer acting camp in upstate New York, when he was 11 and 12. Downey's parents divorced in 1977 when he was 12. At first, he went to live with his mother while his sister went to live with their father in California. After a few years, Downey moved in with his father. After a few years, Downey moved in with his father and attended Santa Monica High School but dropped out in 1982. At the age of 17, he returned to New York to pursue a full-time acting career. Downey worked several jobs to support himself while going to auditions, including cleaning tables at the Central Falls restaurant, working at a shoe store and performing as a living art at the area nightclub. Meanwhile, Downey landed a few roles in local and off-Broadway theatre productions. He landed his first film role in the 1983 film Baby It's You. But scenes were ultimately cut. Downey began to build on stage roles, making his stage debut in 1983 at the Jiva Theatre Center in Arms for the middle class for a three-week run. He also appeared in the short-lived off-Broadway musical American Passion at the Choice Theatre in 1983, produced by Norman Lear. Meanwhile, he joined SNL, however Rolling Stone magazine called Downey the worst SNL cast member of the entire series, stating that Downey feel encapsulates everything that makes SNL great. That same year, Downey had a dramatic acting breakthrough playing James Patter's right-hand man in Tough Turf and then a bully in John Hughes' Weird Science. Molly Ringwald wanted him for the role of Ducky in John Hughes' Pretty in Pink, but the role went to John Cryer. He then co-starred with Ringwald in his first leading role in The Pickup Artist. In 1987, Downey played Julian Wells, a drug addicted rich kid whose life quickly spirals out of control. In the film version of Brad East and Alice's novel Less Than Zero, his performance was critically acclaimed, although Downey stated that for him, the role was like the ghost of Christmas future. As his reliance on drugs had led him to fall into depression. Shortly after completing the film, Downey entered rehab for the first time. The next part would be followed by a series of surgeries and stints in rehabilitation centers over the next decade until his arrest in 1996. His previous success pushed Downey into films with bigger budgets and names such as Chances Are with Sybil Shepard and Ryan O'Neill, Air America with Mel Gibson and Soap Dish with Sally Field, Kevin Klein, Kathy Moriarty and Whoopi Goldberg. In 1992, he played the role of Charlie Chaplin in Chaplin, a role for which he had prepared extensively, learning to play the violin and play tennis left-handed. He had a personal trainer who helped him imitate Chaplin's stance and posture. The role on Downey and Academy Award nomination for the Best Actor at the 65th Academy Awards, but lost to Al Pacino in Scent of a Woman. Then he appeared in the 1994 film Natural Born Killers with Woody Harrelson. 
From 1996 to 2001, Downey was arrested several times on charges related to drugs such as cocaine, heroin and marijuana. He attended drug treatment programs and spent time in county jail. In early 1996, after becoming increasingly worried about Downey, Sean Penn and Dennis Quaid knocked on his door, took his keys and took him to a rehabilitation center in Texan, but Downey ran away a few days later. In June 1996, Downey was arrested for possession of heroin, cocaine, crack and an unloaded .357 Magnum pistol while driving on Sunset Boulevard. A month later, while on probation under the influence of a controlled substance, he entered the neighbor's house through the unlocked front door and fell asleep in one of the beds. The family declined to press charges for trespassing. The tape of the neighbor's 911 call was made available online and became known as the Goldilocks incident. In November 1996, after spending time in a court order rehabilitation facility, he was given an additional six months of live-in rehabilitation placed on three years probation and ordered to undergo mandatory drug testing. In 1997, he missed a code ordered drug test and spent six months in Los Angeles County Jail. After his release, he completed a code ordered 120 day rehabilitation program. In 1999, after coming clean during the recording of Wonder Boys, Downey relapsed. During this time, he faced legal fees and lost his Malibu home. After Downey failed another mandatory drug test in 1999, he was arrested again. Although Downey's attorney Robert Chaprio assembled the same legal team that successfully defended OJ Simpson at his murder trial, Downey was sentenced to three years in prison at the California Drug Treatment Center and Kirkwood State Prison, California. At the time of the arrest, all of Downey's film projects had been completed and were nearing release. He was hired to sing the voice of the devil on the NBC animated series God the Devil and Bob but was fired because he failed to show up for rehearsals. In January 2001, Downey was set to play the role of Hamlet in a Los Angeles stage production directed by Mel Gibson. After five years of drug addiction, arrest rehabilitation and relapses, Downey was ready to work toward full recovery from drugs and a return to his career. Downey got his first acting job after his rehabilitation in August 2001 when he appeared in the music video of Elton John's single I Want Love. Downey was able to return to the big screen after Mel Gibson, who had been a close friend of Downey since they both starred in Air America, paid Downey's insurance cover for the 2003 film The Singing Detective, directed by his co-back-to-school star Keith Gordon. Gibson's Campbell paved the way for Downey's return and he returned to mainstream cinema in the mid-2000s with Gothica, for which producer Joel Silver withheld 40% of Downey's salary until the production closed. It was packaged as insurance against his addictive behavior. It also helped the actor land the lead role in the comedy thriller Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, the directorial debut of screenwriter Shane Black. After Gothica, Downey landed numerous leading and supporting roles, including well-received work in a series of semi-independent films such as A Guide to Recognizing Your Sense and Richard Linklater a scanner darkly. In 2006, Downey returned to television when he voiced Family Guy in the episode The Fat Guy Strangler. Downey had previously called the show's production staff, specifically Seth MacFarlane, and asked if he could produce or help create an episode, as his son Injo is a fan of the show. The show's producers accepted the offer and created the character Patrick Pudishman, Lois Griffin's long-lost mentally disturbed brother, for Downey. In 2007, Downey appeared in David Fincher's mystery thriller Zodiac based on a true story. He played the role of Sam San Francisco Chronicle reporter Paul Avery, who covered the Zodiac Killer case. Despite all the critical acclaim Downey had achieved throughout his career, he had not appeared in a major motion picture. That changed in 2008 when Downey appeared in two critically and commercially successful films, Iron Man 1 and Tropic Thunder. Fabio insisted on having Downey as he repeatedly claimed that Downey would be to Iron Man what Johnny Depp is to the Pirates of the Caribbean franchisee, a leading man who would both increase the quality of the film and increase the public interest. Released in theaters worldwide between April 30 and May 3, 2008, Iron Man crossed over 585 million worldwide and received rave reviews, citing Downey's performance as the film's highlight. In October 2008, Downey agreed to star in two Iron Man sequels as part of the Iron Man series as well as The Avengers, with the superhero team Stark Jones based on the comic book series Marvel's The Avengers. After Iron Man, Downey appeared alongside Ben Stiller and Jack Black in Tropic Thunder, directed by Stiller himself. The three actors embody a Hollywood archetype. Downey plays the egocentric and multiple Oscar-winning Australian actor Kirk Lazarus while starring in a hugely expensive Vietnam-era film called Tropic Thunder. To take on the role of African-American platoon leader Lincoln Osiris, Lazarus underwent a controversial skin pigmentation procedure that required Downey to wear dark makeup and a wig. Stiller and Downey were concerned that Downey's portrayal of the character would become controversial and racist. Stiller says he and Downey always focused on the fact that they were insufferable actors and not African-Americans. Stiller showed a rough cut of the film 
which was well received by the African American community. The film was a huge success and Downey was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his portrayal of Lazarus. The first role Downey took on after Iron Man was that of Sherlock Holmes in Guy Ritchie's adaptation of Sherlock Holmes. Warner Brothers released the film on December 25, 2009. The film set several box office records in the United States for a Christmas Day release, surpassing the previous record holder 2008's Mali and Me by almost $10 million. It finished second behind Avatar in a record-breaking Christmas weekend at the box office. Sherlock Holmes is the eighth most successful film of 2009. Downey's other commercial film in 2010 was the comedy road movie Due Date. The film starring Zach Galifianakis was released in November 2010. After the huge success of his character Iron Man in the MCU, he finally left the shared universe in 2019 following the release of the hit film Avengers Endgame. In 2020, Downey played the title character in Doolittle, depicted in the film as a 19th century Welsh veterinarian who can communicate with animals. It was a disappointment at the box office and received negative reviews from critics who called it too long and lifeless. Finally, in 2023, Downey played the antagonist bureaucrat Lewis Strauss in Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, his performance receiving critical acclaim. For this role, he won a Golden Globe Award, a BAFTA Award, a Screen Actors Guild Award and an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Downey will next star in the television adaptation of writer Van Tien Nguyen's novel The Sympathizer. It was also announced that he would star in the film Play Dirty, where he would reunite with Shane Black, director of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and Iron Man 3. Last Sunday, Downey triumphed over contenders such as Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction, Ryan Gosling for Barbie, Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things and Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon. His win underlined his dominance throughout this award season. Having previously taken top supporting actor honors at the Golden Globes, BAFTA Film Awards, SAG Awards, and Critics' Choice Awards. Reflecting on his journey, Downey, who has been candid about his struggle with substance abuse, shared insights into his turbulent past, revealed in his documentary Senior of 2022, which is a tribute to his director father. He acknowledged that he struggled with drug addiction from a very young age and endured a series of legal troubles and prison sentences after his first Oscar nomination 30 years ago at the age of 28. Downey expressed as gratitude for not receiving the award in 1993, acknowledging that his youthful recklessness may have reinforced misconception about his career. His struggle with his drug addiction and finally his win is one of the best comeback stories of recent times, and no drugs could give him this much high than the one that he is currently enjoying with his success both commercially and critically. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video, do share your thoughts in the comment section about your take on the revered actor, hit the like button and subscribe to your channel to get your weekly dose of cinnamon series. See you at the next one and for the timing we are signing off, farewell old chap and I'll be back.